Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Thank you so much for joining us for this new episode of EP Live. We are back from our trip to Montreal, where we checked out the Shadow of the Tomb Raider video game. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that in this episode. I traveled with the lovely and talented Blake Siefkin, and then I met uh, the lovely and talented Marissa Roberto, and we reviewed Avengers uh, Infinity War, which I hope you've watched. And then I came Came back uh, and I reviewed uh, a spoiler review with a, uh, the lovely and talented Johnny Millennium on our Film Fury channel, a spoiler review of Avengers Infinity War. So it has been on our minds quite a bit, and we will discuss a little bit of that today as well. But we've got to get started with our rundown. Carrie Dustin gets the, uh, uh, the, uh, the rundown today. He says, Stranger Things might own Netflix, but EPN has established itself as the most valuable and original show on YouTube. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Carry this rundown is all yours. Loads of new content has come crashing into Fortnite, literally. The fourth season of the hit online game began early this morning with a massive meteorite impact in the middle of the map. The impact has altered the landscape with craters and other debris, especially around the Dusty Depot area. And there's also a totally new area that's been added to the north of the map. New skins and alien items called Hop Rocks have been added as well, giving players a low gravity boost. As for the original Save the World portion of the game, that's been given a new quest line. Nobody plays the Save the World portion of the game. Everybody's playing in the battle royale mode uh everybody I, I literally i mean everyone around the world is playing this damn game i've played it a little bit it's cool i checked it out on my iphone it's pretty cool it runs runs well but i have an issue with this uh you know constant sort of giving over to you know leveling up and incrementally sort of getting a little bit better in a multiplayer experience i've decided like I've really kind of clued into the fact that I love the story-based stuff a lot more, and I feel like I need to sit down and really progress and see new things. That's why I love games like God of War. Uh, but I, I want to get back into this because I know it's a lot of fun. I was impressed with what I played. I actually liked my experience with Fortnite a little bit more than PUBG, although PUBG has got some you know, great elements in it as well. They're both really solid, fun games, but uh, they're really meant for people that just love that multiplayer sort of competitive experience. I'm gonna jump in though. It's it's too damn cool. Maybe I should do a versus, huh? Should I do a versus? Maybe I'll do it with Johnny or something. Get him, coerce him to play both of these battle royale games. That would be fun. Uh, Capcom has found yet another cool way to cash in on their classic Mega Man library. The publisher is teaming up with retro gaming giant I Am 8-Bit to release two collectible cartridges for the NES game Mega Man 2 and the SNES and the SNES game Mega Man 10 or Mega Man X. They'll each come in different colors, including translucent glow-in-the-dark blue, and both cartridges will actually work with the original consoles and run the actual games. Capcom and I Am 8-Bit did something similar with a Street Fighter II cartridge last year. Quantities are limited, just 85 units, uh, 8,500 units each, and they'll cost a bit more than they did back in the day. 100 bucks US gets you these new cartridges. They arrive this September, right around the same time that the all new, uh, the all new game Mega Man 11 arrives on modern consoles. This just goes to show you, like the the importance of retro gaming is not fading, and we're even going so far as to make these cartridges a collectible items and valuable items to have in collections today and that's I think that's marvelous I mean you obviously have to have a lot of money and the space and the desire to kind of augment whatever NES and SNES uh, collection you've got going already but I think it's really cool and they're they're more art, art pieces than they are like you know state-of-the-art experiences or anything like that I just think it's really clever and it's really tapping into that sort of love you know that uh, it's that same kind of love and I rediscovered it too because my wife bought us a record player on the, over the holidays. And uh, you know, I go in a record store and I buy a classic LP that's been used, and the and the cover's all been sort of frayed a little bit, but the record still plays on the record player. And you realize that that's that's sort of like a a time machine. You know, this isn't quite the same thing because these are all brand new parts and a brand new thing, and it you know, brand new box and everything's supposed to be meticulous. And I'm sure that whoever buys these things will probably put them in glass cases. But still, great works of art. I love I Am 8-Bit and I love Capcom. And the thing that I appreciate about Capcom too is they really respect the fact that they have created this legacy artwork and they do a pretty good job at celebrating it over and over again. And speaking of Mega Man, we're gonna be talking a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, not Mega Man, but something very much influenced by Mega Man a little bit later in the show. 
Uh, it looks like the Call of Juarez series might be changing hands. Game maker Techland, who developed all four games in the series, has announced that they've bought the publishing rights to the latest game, or uh, to their latest game, or their last game, 2013's Call of Juarez Gunslinger from former publisher Ubisoft. The game was actually removed from Steam a month ago, but now that Techland is publishing it, they're putting it back up for sale. I did this as a buried treasure not too long ago. It's unclear what this means for the rest of the Call of Juarez games or the future of the series. Does Ubisoft still own the franchise or does Techland? Techland isn't saying, uh, and uh, we've reached out to Ubisoft for clarification. Well, this is clearly Techland kind of, uh, you know, uh, taking back what's rightfully theirs and also sort of showing the world that they are a publisher unto their own right. Dying Light has become a phenomenal success for this company, and I love Dying Light. That's a terrific zombie hunting game. If you haven't played that sucker, you definitely got to check it out. They keep adding new content to it because the user base is huge for Dying Light. And I believe that they have an opportunity here with Call of Juarez, especially kind of lifting on, uh, you know, the hype surrounding uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Cowboys are going to be all the rage in video games very soon. And this is an opportunity for these guys to kind of get back into that space and own it. And uh, I, I suspect that they're going to be doing some things with multiplayer uh, that sort of keep these things played for a long, long time. Perhaps a battle royale mode in a first person Western game. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, an even bigger media franchise has just found a new home. Hasbro has bought the rights to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers franchise from previous owner Saban Brands for just over uh, half a billion bucks. This includes the film and television rights, of course, uh, and of course the toys, which Hasbro has already helped create in partnership with Saban Brands. Hasbro says that they see great potential in the Power Rangers brand, so expect to see a lot more new toys, TV shows, and movies in the future. Hasbro owns other big franchises like G.I. Joe, Transformers, and My Little Pony, so this opens up loads of crossover potential. And I don't know what you're suggesting here, Blake. Are you saying that we're gonna see a G.I. Joe, Transformers, My Little Pony, Power Rangers movie? My Little Pony's going in there too? Well, my daughter's gonna be all over that. Uh, no, but seriously, the last Power Rangers movie, I actually enjoyed. It was it was good, cheesy fun. Uh, that looked like a Transformers movie. So, like, we are so s close to steps to that. It's insane. Um, and I guess Michael Bay will be <laughs> involved somehow. Uh, and y maybe um, we're gonna see a Shia LaBeouf in a Power Rangers suit. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Uh, but I think this is a good move for Hasbro. I think Power Rangers is still adored by many, many people out there. I had fun at that flick. I don't really have any allegiance to the classic Power Rangers stuff. I was a little bit, it was a little out of my age bracket, uh, but I digged it, I, or I dug it, and um, you know, I think this is a good move on Hasbro's part, and I think uh, if uh, you've been, you know, somewhat amused or somewhat entertained by what Hasbro has been doing uh, with their movies, uh, I think this, this bodes well. And I think clearly, you know, Marvel has been teaching uh, all of these meta-universe property holders a lot of great lessons. And uh, I suspect that we're going to, and, you know, and even Universal with Fast and the Furious, I suspect we're going to be seeing, uh, you know, a lot more allegiance to what the fans have asked for and, and have demanded and the criticisms are going to be heard. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. Do they, they own the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too as well, don't they? No, ha that's a totally different brand? Okay. Totally different company? Uh, we'll see. Maybe not for long. Hasbro seems to be swooping these things up. Okay, well now, last but not least, Marvel and Disney have released a new trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I have not seen the trailer yet. Blake said, let's, uh, let's do a live reaction thing on uh, EP today, and we're going to try something brand new, and why don't we do that right now? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to roll the trailer, and we're just going to shoot video. And obviously, uh, Evangeline Lilly is a co-star in this movie. Uh, she was in the last Ant-Man movie, too. And um, we used to work with her here on EP, and I think most of you probably know that already. But I, I just I can't believe the career she's had. She's a superhero now. So let's check out the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp. So give me a second here, Blake. Um, I'm just going to pop this into full screen here, and we are going to roll... It's two minutes, 17 seconds. Let's go. Let's do this. So, how long have you been Ant-Man again? No, oh, this is crazy. It just sort of happened. Oh, my God. I wish I could fight bad guys <laughs> like you. Oh, my God. mess it up almost every time. So they're going all in on Giant Man. 
<laughs> Maybe you just need someone watching your back. <sighs> wow. Like a partner. There's our girl. I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. That's when this crazy could be ghost who like walks through walls and stuff. Michael Stole Pena was one of the standouts of the first movie. He, he made that movie Not so fun. The world or whatever. Who would have believed that in your hour of need, you would turn to us? Not me. Okay, okay, okay. I got to roll back here for a second here. Now, who who was this? This was Ghost? Who? Oh, she just phased through the... Walls and stuff. Stole your tech. That's cool. She phased through the wall like that. That's pretty rad. Now she wants to take over the world or whatever. I don't know who that actor is. Who would have believed that in your hour of need, you would turn to us? Not me. Because we robbed you. Do you remember? That's us. <laughs> the only chance you got is both of you. Ant Man and the Wasp teaming up. Follow my lead. Oh, wow. She seems more intense. What? <laughs> what the hell was that? There was an ant playing drums. What? What the? What the frack is happening here? This is like, a, this is like a Cronenberg movie all of a sudden. That salt effect was unbelievable. More intense. This is really cool. You go low, I go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? We're gonna die. I don't wanna die. We didn't die. <laughs> so everybody can get shrunk and everybody can grow with this tech now. What I miss? We were just tiny. This is cool. I was partners with Hank on a project called Goliath. How big did you get? My record, 21 feet. You? 65 feet. <laughs> 65. <laughs> oh, man, I love Paul Rudd. If you two are finished comparing sizes. 65. Oh God, that looks great. What I loved about the first Ant-Man movie was that it uh, it was a totally separate experience from the rest of the Marvel stuff, and it was definitely more about humor and comedy, and they nailed it. Michael Pena was, you know, rapid fire kind of retelling all the stuff, and it just, it felt more, it's smaller, no pun intended, and I actually liked it better the second time I saw it on a small airplane screen. I, I I don't know, it was like I focused in on it a little bit more and I heard all the jokes and I just loved it. That was a great trailer. And uh, it, not only is it smaller and more contained and a little more personal and you can tell and like it's not as epic, it's not Thanos coming in, uh, but uh, it does feel like there is real consequence and real, you know, pun intended, real weight to uh, some of the stuff that's going on. And all of the characters are kind of meshing closer together. And I love the wasp's outfit and the wasp powers. Um, and I love that there's a big emphasis on the uh, on the fact that Ant-Man can shrink and grow and do all these other kinds of cool things. And we're gonna be shrinking buildings and stuff. I can't wait to see this flick. Uh, and it looks like it's gonna, it's gonna, I keep have these size allegories. I can't, I can't help myself. It's going to scale nicely next to the epic size of, uh, of Avengers Infinity War. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great fit. And they said that the trailer was going to answer, and I, I must have missed it, but they, they answered why the Ant-Man wasn't a part of the stuff that was going on in Avengers Infinity War. Didn't really, did it? No, it's just sort of like there's something bad going on and Ant-Man and the Wasp have to kind of focus in on that. But I liked the charm in there. I liked the uh, the repartee and the, and the back and forth. I think it's Peyton Reed that directed this one again. He did a great job with the last one, ticking over for um, Edgar Wright, who was kind of, you know, at, an, at odds with Marvel and left the project at kind of the 11th hour. This looks really solid, man. My fingers are crossed. And a uh, big round of applause for Evangeline Lilly who just keeps kicking ass in Hollywood. So impressed, so proud of that, that incredible person. And uh, that was rad. And I have to, uh, NES Sequest uh, uh, just gave us a super chat. Thank you so much. And uh, says, thank you, Vic, love your show. 
thank you. Love your support. Very, very cool. I'm going to dedicate this day and everything cool to you. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for May 1st. On this day in 1939, the world's greatest superhero emerged from the shadows. Detective Comics number 27 first hit shelves, introducing readers for the first time to a new hero called the Batman. Created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, the character was introduced as the alter ego of the rich industrialist Bruce Wayne, who dons a frightening costume and uses his cunning detective skills to take on bad guys. The original story features many of the same concepts that are still with Batman today today, like his distinctive look, although other aspects of the character like his orphan backstory and loyal butler Alfred wouldn't be introduced until later. After the success of Detective Comics number 27, the publisher realized the potential and they soon gave Batman his own comic series, which hit shelves less than a year later. The rest is history. Audiences were introduced to a less heroic industrialist on May 1st, 1941, because that's when Citizen Kane premiered at the Palace Theater in New York City. It was the first feature film from 26-year-old theater and radio producer Orson Welles, who had already made a name for himself with a Broadway adaptation of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar and an infamous 1938 radio adaptation of the sci-fi novel War of the Worlds. Citizen Kane was a whole other level. Distributor RKO essentially gave Orson Welles a blank check to make whatever film he wanted and he wrote, directed, and starred in a film about a rich newspaper tycoon who conquers the world but loses his soul. The character was a thinly veiled riff on the real-life newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst, who wasn't happy about the film, so he used all his power to prevent the movie from getting any publicity. This means that despite critical praise, Citizen Kane was a massive financial failure when it first came out, but eventually found new life and is today recognized as one of the greatest films ever made. I guess everybody's a critic, but on May 1st, 1999, television audiences got their first look at an iconic character. The very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants premiered on the Nickelodeon Network as a special preview after the 1999 Kids' Choice Awards, with the first regular episodes following a few months later. The first episode introduces the lovable anthropomorphic Sponge, along with other citizens of Bikini Bottom, like his dim-witted best friend Patrick, the frugal restaurant tycoon Mr. Krabs, and the ill-tempered neighbor Squidward. The show was a huge hit, becoming the highest rated Saturday morning cartoon in the world, spawning an entire industry of merchandise, comic books, video games, and two big screen movies. SpongeBob was recently renewed for a 12th season that will keep it on the air until at least 2020. That really was a, a very cool day. We had Batman, Citizen Kane, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Can't ask for a better day than that. All right, moving on. We've got a uh, a very cool review that's that's uh, I, I, long in gestation here. This is a game that actually came out in 2017, and on the plane to Montreal, I finally found it in my um, uh, growing library of Nintendo Switch games. The eShop is very crowded. And I've talked about that before, but one of the games that's been there for a while is called Mighty Gunvolt Blast, and it's by a company called Inti Creates, and they worked with uh, the Mighty Number no. Nine folks, and they put Beck into the game, and they also have uh, um, the other character, God, I, Mighty Gunvolt something. I, I can't remember the characters' names. And then there's DLC for a whole bunch of other characters. Each of them has their own power-ups and abilities, and we spoke about this Mega Man. Um, uh, Renaissance and all of the uh, the, the collectability and uh, uh, the never-ending escape of great Mega Man titles. We've got Mega Man 11 coming this year and the collector's editions with all of the, the new Mega Man X games and all that stuff, which is great. Uh, but this is kind of riffing on that and it kind of you know, there was a lot of disappointment around uh, Mighty Number no. 9, and it's interesting that Beck has appeared in other things, and he's been cooler there, and this is another case where Beck is cooler in this game as well. Mighty Number... No or, jeez, uh, 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 Mighty Gunvolt Blast is... <laughs> there's all these titles... is uh, very much, you know, scaled and uh, put together like a classic Mega Man experience. You are going from stage to stage. It's nonlinear. You can choose whatever you want. You're on highways. You're on, um, you know, oil rigs. You're fighting bosses in all kinds of different places. There's underwater sections. There's things on fire. Uh, there's characters with giant blades whirling around and stuff like that. And you've got to kind of learn the patterns, uh, dodge their fire, and dodge their attacks, and take them out so that you can gain new abilities. We've played that a million times before. Something just felt right. You know how sometimes you do, you kind of find your way to a game and it's just the right 
game at the right time. That's exactly how I felt. I was sitting on the plane. You know, you're in a confined space for many hours, and it's just like, ah, oh, this is peace. This is exactly what I want to enjoy and what I want to play. And I felt that about Mighty Gumball Blast. It was super fun. They've added a couple of really cool elements to this game that makes it distinctive. And I'll tell you what, it's about 10 bucks US, so it's a very inexpensive purchase. And I, I'm going to say right now that it's absolutely something that you want to get for your Switch. It's also out on the 3DS. It's the same core experience because it's like an 8-bit, 16-bit game. Right down to the T. They also did that, uh, Inti Creates also did that um, Master Blaster Zero game or Blaster Master Zero. I can't remember. I always mix those two up, but it's also great on the Switch. Uh, but this game uh, added some new bits in there. You have a lot of customization options, and you can kind of customize your attack powers. You can customize the speed of... Um, the bullets that you're going to shoot out, you can customize how they're going to shoot out. You can make them, you know, sort of curve, or you can make them shoot out in a waveform. You can expand the size of them. They can diffuse across the screen if you want. You spend these points that you collect by being a better player on all of these different attributes. You can give yourself double jumps or triple jumps. So, you know, as you dig deeper into the experience, you're really customizing the way that you play it. And it's really cool. It's like having a little mini sort of Mega Man editor inside of the game. And it's not just unlocking the power up from the boss. You're actually, you know, finding power ups and pieces that you can add to your arsenal and sort of customize as you go. And you've got dart weapons and electro weapons and laser weapons and missiles and things like that. But it's just the way that you can kind of tune everything precisely to the way that you want to play it that makes it so special. And I thought that was really fun. And there's also this... Um, uh, they, they put a big emphasis on it, but I don't know if it's that necessary. You have this ability to uh, blow up the bad guys in close proximity, and you get a burst sort of power-up. And it sort of adds to your overall score and your ability there. They've also got a... And so you want to try to get up, up close and personal and take them out and then get to the next character and up close and personal. And it, it sort of creates a little bit of a chain if you can keep it going. But if you miss, it sort of kills out the chain. We've seen that before. They also have a retry meter as opposed to, uh, you know, losing a life and starting right back at the beginning. It's actually pretty generous in the uh, sort of checkpoint system. So it's not quite as frustrating as some of those classic Mega Man games are. It's still really difficult. There's still a lot of challenge. You know, you'll be hanging off of, uh, you know, a wire and you've got some dude that's sort of floating above you and he sends down an electrical bolt and he zaps the wire and then something else is shooting at you from behind. And, you know, you got to sort of bounce away from the stuff, sh get close and shoot the character and, and try to do all that without having to restart that whole sequence over and over again. And that's pretty much on every second screen. And so you kind of have to, you, just like in every Mega Man game, kind of find the maze that, of uh, uh, that sort of the endurance run of how you can get past that first boss and sort of scale your character up to be able to be, overcome all of the challenges that you're going to meet throughout the experience. It's really tight. And I really dug the music. Uh, if you love this art style and if you know some of the other characters that Inti creates is kind of... Um, uh, you know, offered up in the uh, the DLC. There's actually a lot of extended value in this. There's some replay value in this, obviously, because you're going to try to, you know, speed run through some of these levels as, as quickly as you can, and you can kind of test your might with, uh, you know, how you tune your character and how you equip everything. Very, very solid game, and I was, I was very surprised and kind of uh, um, shocked that I hadn't tried this sooner. Because I love it. Mighty Gun Volt Blast is going to get an 8 out of 10. But now, let's take a look at a buried treasure. Look, spring is in the air, and it's time to start thinking about baseball games. And, of course, the big bad out there is the MLB, the show game that Sony puts out every year. But the uh, fantastic game that is still worth running to and playing is called The Bigs. It was a smash hit, and they made The Bigs 2, so you can qualify either one of these. I'm cheating again here a little bit with my Buried Treasure segment. These were hits, but they're old. And so you got to dig them up. You got to go find them. And as we all know with sports games, they're iterative and we get a new one every year. 
year, but we haven't had a bigs game in a long time. This is arcade baseball uh, to the nth degree. Such fine, fine gameplay in here. So addictive, so fun. You're going to be playing with old, uh, you know, players, and probably some of them have retired by now, or most of them have. Uh, but Blue Castle Games, who became Capcom Vancouver, made something so fun and so addictive, it was really hard to stop playing this sucker. You know, lots of uh, mini games and, and extra little challenges, but there was a core sort of baseball purity to this experience that kept you coming back for more. It's a fantastic party game. If you've got friends over, this is one that you're going to want to have some couch co-op or couch competitive play with, and you are going to be astounded by the the level of intelligence and the fantastic systems that are in there. It felt perfect to make those connections and, and to smash the ball out into the field or over the fence. Uh, and, it, you know, it, there was just all kinds of beautiful treats and rewards flashing up on screen all the time. You feel like a superstar, and the Bigs is absolutely astounding. It's so good. It, it was like a, it was like a, you know, a baseball bomb that exploded and created such ripple effects across the industry. Everybody I know that has covered games for a long time and has played every sports game under the sun still raves about the Bigs and the Bigs too. Uh, and that is why I am putting the Bigs in my buried treasures. I have got MLB The Show 18 still in the pipeline. I've been sort of dabbling, playing a little bit of that, but these indie games keep taking my attention and, and sort of not indie games like that one right there. Uh, Blake made a comment that I'm, I've got a lot of toys on my desk, and one day I think you're going to tune into an EP Live. It's just going to be a mound of toys, and I'll just be peeking out from behind something. Uh, anyways, I've got another indie game that I've just been recently playing, um, and I want to review that. It's called Minute, and this one, I actually played it on my Mac, on the same Mac that I edit my uh, my pieces on, which is crazy, my, my work machine. Uh, and cause, so it's available there. It's available on PC. I'm sure it's coming to every platform. Devolver has brought this game out. It looks like crap. Look at that. The graphics are uh, very <laughs> rudimentary. It looks like uh, like a ZX Spectrum. I think that that was one of the old consoles. It looks like something that you know you played off of a cassette tape. Um, so very, very archaic, black and white visuals, and it's very much like a Legend of Zelda kind of top-down type of experience. You're walking around and trying to find the secrets, and you go into dungeons, and you got to fight the bosses and fight the, uh, the baddies that you'll encounter along the way, find the loot that's going to help you achieve your goals. The only thing is, you have a minute to do it. <laughs> and so what happens after a minute, you die. Now, you have unlocked some stuff within that minute. You might have, uh, you know, uh, t killed all the crabs so that the the innkeeper is going to say, oh, okay, well, here, take this. Or you may have, uh, you know, hit a switch that has activated a bridge so you can cross into an another section of the playing area. Um, and you may, Or you may have even discovered a new territory that you can kind of use as a home base and somewhere down the road, you might develop uh, the ability to teleport around the map so you can get to places a lot quicker or perhaps purchase some uh, equipment that can make you move a little bit quicker. You know the deal. And some of this stuff is not surprising, but what is surprising is how clever the developers were to kind of embellish and add all of these pieces in all of these different directions. The map is actually enormous, and it isn't immediately um, apparent just where you're going to go. At first, it feels like it's very hemmed in and closed off until you find a sword and you can start hacking away at, uh, uh, you know, the bushes and things like that. Then you can uh, you get the ability to knock down some trees and blow up some stuff. And, um, you know, it just scales the... Uh, the challenge in a beautiful way, in a very smart way, and you're uncovering the mystery as you go along, and it's a very compelling hook. Now, this is like speed running through Majora's Mask on speed. You know, Majora's Mask has that thing where you get three days, and it's just like, oh my god, I gotta do all the things. But this is like, you got a minute, and you gotta do all the things, and you gotta get over there, and the conveyor belts are pushing you back that way. So it does get a little frustrating, but I, I promise you, when you die, you're going to press, okay, I'm, a, I'm alive again. I'm going to try this again. Because of that minute hook, and that's what's so clever about this, I think this is going to be um, one of those perfect type of experiences to have on your cell phone. I'm sure there's a mobile version of this coming. Um, this is be a, a great Switch game where, you, you know, you can play it for a little bit and do a little bit, but it's a lot within the context of the of the whole thing. It saves your whole progress. 
Uh, you do become more powerful. Uh, and you're sort of helping out people and saving characters and interacting with people. And there's, uh, you know, lots of cool little messages and story beats in here as well. Uh, one of my favorite moments, actually, it comes on early in the game, so I'm not spoiling too much, is you meet this old guy. And you've got a minute on the clock, right, until you're dead. And the old guy is just like, hello, it's so good to see you. I love, you know what I'm saying? And you're just like, come on, dude. Tick, 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 tick. And that's just great game development. Minute is a treasure. It's one of my favorite games of 2018 so far. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10, even with those ugly ass graphics. All right. Uh, we have got something that is definitely not a retro experience. We're going back into state-of-the-art mode. Let's find out about Shadow of the Tomb Raider right now. I'm with my old friend David Enfancy, who runs IDOS Montreal, who we all know and love from the Deus Ex games, but now you're doing something new. Tomb Raider is at the studio. How did that happen? How did you guys get the responsibility to make Tomb Raider from Crystal Dynamics? Actually, we worked on the two previous games, so we learned a lot to these uh, two developments, of yep, course. Yep. Uh, after the timing has been right uh, for us to lead this one, so very uh, honored to be that. For those that don't know anything about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, can you kind of encapsulate what's happening in this game? Yeah. Yeah. I won't reveal too much. Yeah. You understand that, yeah, you know, you have to experience uh, it by yourself. But yeah. uh, uh, that's the third game of the trilogy. This one, she's totally in control. Totally in control. But the, the, she's, it's all about at the beginning of the game, I won't reveal the end, but about to revenge her um, uh, father dead. You know, uh, she is pursuing uh, Trinity, and uh, and uh, you will live this experience of revenge, and how Lara will become the Tomb Raider she meant to be. I played the game, and it's lovely. What have you guys learned as a team and as a studio for telling? you know, compelling stories and getting us sort of wrapped in the fiction of these game worlds that you create. Uh, yeah, but of course not new to us, you know, we uh, the narrative driven experience from Deus Ex, Chief also, so we applied a lot of these learnings mm -hmm. uh, to this game, of course. Uh, through the two previous developments, we learned a lot of how to be respectful to this Tomb Raider franchise. It's yep. very important too, but bringing some uh, freshness to, um, to this uh, last game of the trilogy uh, because it was important to not do a sequel of sequel you know yeah <laughs> as a gamer i don't want to play that kind of yes. game you know yes. so uh, we wanted to bring something very specific to uh, Eidos montreal so a uh, story uh, the the show don't tell the visual direction everything is uh, totally uh, new we're seeing with games like the ones you've mentioned, with Tomb Raider games and with Deus Ex, but also with titles like The Last of Us and God of War, we're feeling the emotional impact of these characters and they're making us, even if it's a hack and slash experience, you're attached and you care about them. And, and I guess that's what this technology enhancement allows as well, right? You get even closer yeah. to your characters. At first, uh, yeah, you're right, but it starts with the, the writing mm. in the sense that this trilogy has been taught uh, with Lara as the key point, the central point of the experience. So yeah. knowing that, you know, you, yeah, of course you have a strong mechanics, you have a high fidelity uh, rendering and everything, but the emotion is key. And uh, how you deal with that is a part of writing, it's a part of animation, of course, it's about the rendering of Lara, but um, uh, what she faced also uh, through the experience you know experiencing uh, things is one one aspect of the emotion but having somebody giving you some feedback about it yeah. it's next level in terms of writing experience and and shadow is a perfect example of that well you also get it from the uh, the claustrophobic moments in the game as well when like the water is all around you and the rocks are falling on you and it looks like you may drown and that all has to be perfectly captured and illustrated as well right yeah, the animation on the water is a key challenge, something new to us, so we pushed a lot and learned a lot about that. Yeah. Um, a fear, actually, the fear is um, a creative direction for the entire game. Yeah. So it's, you experience it through uh, the underwater exploration, but you, you will feel it through the jungle, you will feel it through all aspects of the game. But the underwater experience, it's something usual for a Tomb Raider. Yeah. 
franchise, but we pushed a lot on that. And, and you're right, the synergies and everything is scary. Now, we were running, I think, on Xbox One X yep. hardware. Can you tell me a little bit about some of these embellishments and some of these enhancements that we're going to see on 4K ready machines? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, we um, we develop a new uh, lighting system, for example, mm -hmm. a rendering system for characters um, to be uh, to be um, totally to exploit the max the maximum the potential of this Xbox One X. So it's definitely an amazing experience. 4K, 60 FPS. Cannot reveal too much, but at some point you will have a. Um, uh, a scene with 155 NPCs on screen at the same time, 4K, 60 FPS. Awesome. And we had to push a lot of things on um, uh, through the engine and the new systems we break, worked uh, in uh, this um, this game. We speak about the Xbox One X, but playing the game on Xbox One S, we pushed the envelope also. Nice. So uh, for me, that will be the most beautiful game on Xbox One S ever right, done. Right, right, right. I commit now. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you're not forgetting no, the the, not the people that have the PS4s and the and the platform, regular PS4 Pro, yes. uh, PS4 and the PC. So it's, you're optimizing oh, yeah. everywhere. And Will the you? Switch version is going to be rad too. We're going to do 4K <laughs> 60 frames. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm um, 150 uh, NPCs on screen 4K 60 FPS. Mm, I'm not sure about that. So the death of single player games is total bullshit. Is that <laughs> totally. what it is, right? Totally. You yeah. know, and when we started Deus Ex, for example, in 2007, you know, we had uh, our publisher saying, you should do multiplayer, you should do multiplayer. And yeah. we were, no, it's Deus Ex experience. It's action RPG, it's story driven and everything. And we have to be true to that. We don't need a multiplayer experience to sell more copies. Yes. And we. We, we've been true to that, and it's the same thing for Shadow. Yeah. We, we stick to the single player experience, we totally believe in it, it's not death, and uh, God of War is a good example of it yeah. uh, also. So we should not uh, follow the trend yeah. and, and stay true to what we like to do and what we like to play. Right, right. It does not mean that I don't believe in multiplayer experience, but for me it's two different audiences. My uh, viewers would be pissed at me if I didn't ask you about Deus Ex. Or what, what's, mm -hmm. When are you guys going to announce something about more Deus Ex? Um, so Deus Ex is here. I want to reassure you yeah. that we did not forget Deus Ex. We built the studio with uh, this franchise. We gave uh, blood, sweat, everything to reboot this franchise and be true to it. So it's not dead. Awesome. It's not dead. We, it's here and we just need to think about the future of it and make it correctly and respectfully. All right, so stay tuned, dot, dot, yeah, dot. Yeah, no, definitely. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank man. you very much. I'm loving your suggestions here. I'm reading along on the chat here. We've got uh, Drangley saying an EP Super Bowl ad, uh, question mark. Uh, Paul Adamson saying we should rent billboards to advertise that EPN is still kicking ass. Bear Dog Pictures, great format, lighting, production, uh, reaction vids, and props. Everything's on point. The show's better than ever. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for your, uh, um, your, your desire to have more people tune in. We obviously want to do that too. It is a difficult thing in media right now to get attention for your stuff because everybody's got a channel, everybody's got a, pointed, a camera pointed at themselves. Uh, and we are trying things to kind of, you know, maintain a TV production quality in here. I'm really loving, I, you know, selfishly, I love this EP live format. I love that we can chat with you guys and that's what this next segment's all about is uh, we let's play and chat, that's what we call it. Um, and we're gonna play a game called Lightfall, but I, I love that we can do that and we can throw to some of the pieces that we cut together that which are very much in keeping with our our, you know, our TV show days, um, we go out in the field and shoot our reviews on the run quite often and bury treasure and all that. It's a really nice format. And, I, you know, behind the scenes, I am having some really interesting discussions that will kick things up several notches. Uh, but all of that stuff, as you know, takes time. There's a lot of people that need to kind of approve all of that stuff. If you guys want to help us, the way that you can help us is, uh, is sponsoring us. Drangley, you rock. Thank you so much. Uh, is... Uh, uh, you know, getting on the Reddits and, and Twitter and all that stuff and kind of helping us spread the word. There's a lot of people out there that will pay 
um, uh, for clicks and pay for views or cheat somehow to kind of make their stuff look bigger than it is. I don't believe in any of that shit. It's got to be straight up. People have got to find it and they've got to dig it. We've never had marketing money like that to spend on any, on commercials for EP as a TV show or whatever. All of our viewership all the way across time has been people have found it and they've liked it and they've told two friends and then they've told two friends. And at the height of our television time, we were getting seen by more than a million and a half people a week, and we were on the biggest stations across North America. But TV, as we know, has really shifted. This is an amazing platform, YouTube and Twitch and Facebook and all the stuff that we're on. Uh, but it really does require the community saying, look, I believe in this and I want to invest in it either through sharing or supporting or sponsorship or, you know, super chats, whatever whatever you, you feel like. We're just going to keep doing what we do because we love it and it's a great format and this is one of my favorite new things that we've introduced this uh this season it's our let's play and chat uh i talked to the developers at bishop games which i believe are uh in quebec uh, and i asked them for a code for their new game called lightfall i missed the prologue i was kind of reading more than paying attention here uh but uh it, it, I think it's kind of like Limbo. It's another indie little uh, indie game. It's on the Switch. It's on the PC. I believe it's on the other platforms as well. And uh, so let's play a little bit. I am going to focus on the game, not just chat, chat, chat. Uh, I do hope that you guys caught some of those exclusives that we got in our Tomb Raider segment there with uh, David Alfonsi. The guy is amazing. Uh, he's a veteran with uh, love in his heart for this industry. And Hi, everyone. He's created tons of great games. Sorry, I killed. That's, that's uh, who a, did I kill? Paul Rudd took a took a header. Yeah, he's uh, not important. But uh, that was a great combo with David. Uh, let's play a little Lightfall, and Bl uh, Blake is here to um, follow along in the chat. If you've Hold got on, questions, I, comments, anything you want to say, let Hold us on, know. I have to say the thing that I always say about the audio. Yeah. Let me know if the audio sucks. Or I if it's too high or, or too low. Or if it's too low. high or low or crackly or whatever. Okay, this is a... Um, this is a uh, platformer, physics-based. Cool. I don't know if I've got double jump, so I can jump off of the walls. Good, I like that. And this so is on the Strider. Switch, and what other platforms? Uh, PC for sure. And Mac, I believe you can play it on the Mac as well. It's crazy how many, you know, AAA games, but tons of indie games are on the Mac as well, which is pretty cool. When I downloaded um, Minute, because I had just edited a piece and then I, I wanted to just see what was on the Steam on the Steam service for the Mac. I was really impressed by how many titles are actually available on the platform on Steam. Okay, that's a checkpoint. Okay. Definitely got a cool aesthetic here. Uh, earlier in the show, we had a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Retro Cabeza says, uh, please don't spoil Infinity War because he's or he or she is uh, watching it tomorrow. And yes. yeah, we you were going to do an Infinity War chat, but you decided against it. So. Yeah, we just kind of teased it a bit. But what we did do on Film Fury, Johnny and I did our if you if you've seen the movie, we've got a 25 minute discussion with lots and lots of spoilers about Infinity War. We also have uh, Johnny's impressions and review on the game because uh, I saw it alone in Montreal. Or I saw it with Marissa and Marissa and I reviewed it on EPN. Whoa, but whoa, whoa. Uh, you saw it with and, me too. And Blake, yes. Yes. Forget and Blake enjoyed me. it. What would there. you give it? A uh, solid eight. Eight. That's pretty I'm a harder, high. I'm a harder scorer than you too. That's so. the, well, you're you've got very distinctive, uh, I, definitive taste. I concur things. with all the points you and Marissa run, made. I don't run, think I had run. any. Uh, oh my lord! Ooh, okay, that was hard. Washed. I wouldn't add any extra complaints to what you guys said, other than the fact that it does feel a little rushed and a little mm -hmm. one so many characters. But I I, I rewatched uh, Civil War yeah. a couple days ago with my mom because she wants to see the new Avengers movie, so I made her rewatch uh, Civil War. Yeah, and. <laughs> That movie feels way more rushed and way more too many characters than Infinity War. Oh, uh, okay. So because yeah. they're they're also you know putting in another pretty strong plot of the uh, the registration of the superheroes in that movie. Yeah. And then they also have to do a lot of character introductions. Yeah. 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 Infinity this War is really more just about. Uh, oh, cool. So I am controlling where the platforms pop up by pressing the B button. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Ness Sequest says, This is my first time seeing Blake. I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> 
He I do have a giant alive. Kratos. I do have a giant Kratos right in front of my face, but uh, <laughs> and, a, and an axe coming out of my chin. But yeah, whatever. I would like to see Kratos versus Thanos. How do we make that happen? Just I get actually, your Infinity Gauntlet and go like that. Yeah, and make anything happen. I, I actually asked. This is getting into Avengers spoiler territory. We we shall abide and not do that. But uh, if you have seen the movie and want to get into it a little bit, watch our vid on Film Fury and then uh, and comment below. And eventually we will have an EP live, full on spoilery chat about the flick, but not quite yet. A lot of people are just seeing it. Uh, Adrian Leon says that TMNT: The Turtles franchise is owned by IS Playmates. Playmates, okay. Yeah. So. But who who made the movie? I thought it was it's same people that uh, made. Uh, no, they were all made by. Yeah, the the new ones were made by Michael Bay and Paramount. But not Hasbro had nothing to do. I don't with think it. so. No. Okay. No. Um, I think the. I, I don't think, know what I'm supposed. Oh, the, I can the, jump on the wall. Okay. The earlier okay. films were made by New Line, which is now Warner Brothers. So I think mm. the film rights aren't owned by any specific studio. They're okay. probably licensed to them by whoever owns the toy franchise and the gotcha, comics. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm not doing so well here. Okay. I don't know where that platform's gonna be. Bump. Oh, I double tap it. Yes, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's that's cool. Okay. That is cool. Is that gonna be the way it is all the way through this? That's interesting. I don't think I've ever played anything like that before. Okay. Uh, Jordan Cunningham has a nice comment. I'm loving God of War, but it definitely... Oh, uh, the only thing I wished God of War had was more open exploration like Oops. Breath of the Wild. Right. I think that's a fair point. Yeah. That's a different game then, I think. He's back. Yeah, it is, isn't and it? Here yeah. I thought I was Not every game can be... There's uh, a place for linear games. That's like uh, Darkstalkers. Or not Darkstalkers, Darksiders. <laughs> Is there a Darkstalkers? Is that something that... Yeah, Darkstalkers is Capcom's awesome fighting game. Didn't we play that? What was that game we played on the Dreamcast? Uh, that was Power Stone. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit before my time. I thought about putting some... Uh, we're definitely going to do some more retro stuff. I was looking through my Jenny games and, and uh, want to do some more um, Dreamcast and SNES. All that stuff. But but new things are out there, and I love giving the um, indie devs a little bit of love. You and I did a lot of A Way Out, and we still haven't finished that, and I thought maybe we should play that some more, but I feel like we've played mm, a lot of that. This is a better idea. Yeah. <laughs> Check out something new, right? It, less chance for me to be cynical when I'm not ah! playing. So you... I, I think the only ability I have is to save my ass from falling by putting these platforms below me. Yeah, someone is saying there. if you, you tap mind. B at the height of your jump to get the platform. I don't know what that means. I think that's what you're doing already. Okay. Um, Has anybody been playing this on the chat? Uh, yeah, I think... Who said that? The B comment. Oh, I can't find it now. Cool. Somebody said that, so I know at least one person has played it. It's very dramatic. Ooh. Pink is bad in this game. Got it. Bad. Run. Run, Vic. It's got a little uh, Rayman Legends kind of vibe to this game, too. It does, yeah. Oh, shite. Rayman Legends is fantastic on the Switch, by the way. If you're looking for a great, uh, massive side-scrolling game, it's on other, everything else as well, but it's a great Switch game because you can bring it everywhere with you. That's I been fully recommend Rayman Legends. That's been disconcerting that pink is bad, because when I, I see a bright object like that in a video game, I want to touch it. Well, the, yeah, but we're a dark creation. Okay. Here we are. This is our, this is our dude. Okay. So they're, they're I can't really hear what they're saying. Reversing the color rolls. I think if you turn it up on the TV... Here, where's the remote? Let me get the remote. I got it. It's right here. Yeah, I think if you turn it up there, it should be louder for your headset. Will it turn it up? Uh, it shouldn't, no. No, okay. No. Swangor says, hi all, just stopping by to say hi and heading out again. Donnie S, good to see you. Fashionably late, <laughs> as always. That would be the end of it. The path of the gods. Little Attention. tiny Ant-Man fell over too. Let's put him up here. 
Attention Gaming Disorder says has a long comment. Uh, superhero movies are really oversaturated. Yes. And eight is the highest these can get. Just so predictable, nothing new. Dark Knight may never be topped. Mm. Marvel is trying to fight with God, but arms too short. I agree with you that The Dark Knight has yet to be topped as a superhero movie. It's still the best one. But uh, I, I, I'm pretty cynical and I disagree overall. Like... Is there too many superhero oh movies? Well, there's a lot, but I don't know if there's too many, right? I, I would say the argument is, are there too many superhero stories? Because for many decades longer than video or than movies have been around, the comics have been telling great stories with superheroes for a very yeah. long time. Yeah. And, uh, oh, so I have control over this. Oh, this is cool. A little bit of Trine. Yeah, I was just going to say it looks like Trine. And, uh, can I move my character, though, when I do that? Oh, I see. Ooh, okay, so leave that. Oh, I see. Don't get snapped by the laser. <laughs> Just wear the block as a hat. Yeah. Oh! And don't, don't oh run goodness. into the next laser, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, he's okay. He's totally limbo oh, he's, kid. like, s smoking because he got burned. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally Limbo Kid, isn't he? He's Limbo Kid with uh, glowing eyes and, and my kind of hair, I think, a little bit. Okay, so now what? Oh, I climb. I think with superhero movies, as long as the stories stay fresh and interesting within that genre, then I think it's fine. Like, Infinity War is a story we haven't seen before in the superhero genre. Yeah. We've yeah. never, I, I, I'm not going to say what, they, they do something at, you know, that's unique and different that I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil it, but something I haven't seen in a superhero movie before. And so that's saying a lot. I mean, even though we've seen a million of these things already, it's like, it's still fresh and original, if you have the right people. I mean, it. these books have been around for so long. Batman's yeah. 80 years old, yeah. you know, and there's still new issues coming out all the time. There's still the opportunity to create tons and tons of Batman moments on screen they didn't seem to be it's, much of you know yeah. superhero movies aren't a genre they're just a, it's just a category of filmmaking you know they're not all the same Over here. tension gaming disorder follows up by saying serious. comics take more chances so they're better she stories than movies well that's only because there are more of them you know, that's only because... Uh, and they're less risky financially. Yes, but as these things prove to be more and more risky and people discover that, uh, you know, making... I mean, look at the Marvel TV shows on Netflix. By and large, they're pretty successful. Yeah. They've done a really good job with those. Except for... Except for Iron Fist. Except for when and, they're not. And Defenders, but... <laughs> um, you know, there's still a lot of room to go with these things. And I think Infinity War shows um, Looks like you're trapped on the other side. how, you, you know, the events, through? stories happen in the comic books. It's that same kind of, what am I trying to do here? You gotta Let's break see. that somehow. Oh, okay, Whoa, how did cool. you do that? I use the uh, Y button as a weapon. So you turn yourself into like a giant sword? What did you just do? Yeah. Oh, the box turns into a giant sword. Okay. Yes. That's cool. Okay. All right, so I have the, this this power out of nothing. Okay. I think I have to be near it. No? So not when the timer runs out on the... Oh, when the timer runs out. Okay. Break that. What's in there? He vanished. Ah, I'm trying to collect stuff in there. Ooh. What the frack? What's I really happening? like this art style. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. really like look at the that that cathedral like stuff in the background. That's really cool. Am I trying to I'm trying to light stuff up here? I see. There, there we go, there we go, and one more. Okay. Did you do it? I don't know. It's very abstract. Look at this owl with a uh, giant mustache. Vic, did you play Ori in the Blind Forest or Hollow Knight? Tiago Santos wants to know. I, I've played Ori, I love it. And I've touched Hollow Knight. I have not played enough of it, but I've heard it's great. And the other game that you that EA published that I didn't play was Faye. I think I'm gonna ask for um, a review code on that. Okay, so what am I supposed to do here? 
Uh, Ness Sequest says, what games do you play with your daughter, Vic? Uh, a lot of the Lego stuff, and Ruby's actually finished uh, Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild oh, sorry. with there, me. There's more to his question. Uh, just got the Nintendo Switch yesterday and enjoyed playing Labo with his son. Ah, cool. So yeah. I think he means specifically games on the Switch to play with a child. Uh, yeah, my daughter loves Zelda. She she absolutely fell in love with Zelda and Twilight Princess, and then when Breath of the Wild came out, it, it blew her mind. And uh, we played a ton of that. She got to the end with me. She lets me steer and stuff, but she wants me to read the whole story to her, which is really cool. It turns it into kind of like a uh, like a story time. And then she remembers all the details even better than I do. You know, like she remembers character names and and uh, oh, this is tricky. So Zelda, big time. And she, she enjoyed Mario, and she loves uh, the Lego games as well. Lego Dimensions is something that she and I have played a ton of, and we've streamed a lot of. I only have a set amount of those. A really good game to play with a kid is Wolfenstein, the new Colossus yeah, on the Switch. Yeah, you're a and terrible Doom. father. Doom. And Doom, yeah. Anything called Doom should not be played with a kid. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Okay, that's tricky. That's cool. Alright. I get you, game. Uh-oh. That's cool. It's it's very much like Trine. It's Trine meets Limbo. Which is great. There's my elevator pitch. Imagine if you had a game that was like Limbo! That was the pitch meeting. Right? <laughs> yeah. But then you put blocks in there that you could move, like Trine. Sold. It's kind of disappointing Here. that Trine 3 didn't do well. Because that those were good games. Those are really cool games, but they came out very fast and furious, like, no yeah, pun intended. Yeah. yeah, they didn't really... Oh! I'm, I'm zipping through because I've got two things to control at the same time here. Oh, Unravel is also a really good scroller. Unravel drove me nuts. <laughs> that was such a frustrating game. I loved I, I, it. I loved the concept. It was I liked the cute little yarn guy. Yeah, he was but, cute. Yeah, it was it got very hard and frustrating. <sighs> oh my god, that was hard. Was, yeah, okay. Ninja Gaiden up the wall, yeah. Cool. Alright, that was cool. This is Shin. What's the story the of this game, Vic? Do you know? Always parading around with his twin. This blades. is Shin. Much ado about nothing. My own talons are much sharper. I'm turning it right up. Doesn't seem to be getting much louder though. Okay. Is there an, right. Isn't there an internal volume control on the Switch? Oh, it's actually or, it's a bit louder. Maybe try. Can you, is there a headphone jack on the Switch? I'm, I'm good. I can hear it now. Oh my. Look at this. Let me know if the audio is good again, people. people. I don't know. If yeah, it, if it's it, sh it shouldn't be getting louder when Vic turns it up on the TV, but if it does, let me know. I've heard countless stories of his annoying antics. Ah! Doy Owen says, my nephew is coming over this weekend. I will try Nintendo Labo with him. Yeah, I haven't got Labo yet. I I've uh, Nintendo Canada didn't have tons of um, review kits. And I, I, I would imagine that they're probably trying to determine what outlets are right for the thing. Yeah. And, and it makes sense they don't have an, a lot because cardboard is really expensive. Well, they, I, I, I feel like they're trying to find, you know, like parent magazine and things like that. They're trying to find, which I love about Nintendo, is that they make products that are outside of the norm. And that's really great for the business, you know, their business, but also the industry. But I have not played around with, with the Labo. And I, I'm just going to wait until Nintendo has a review pack that they can send us. And then we'll build it on the on the show. We'll do an EP live. Um, I am psyched to give it a whirl. And I'm totally interested to hear what my daughter's got to say about it. Timberwolf just gave us a super chat. Thank you, Timberwolf. Thank you very much, my friend. Ah. Ah. Oh, are those little birds going to attack you? Uh, so far it's been all environment. It's been PvE, which I, I, I like. I haven't seen those birds yet, though. I think they're... Did they just add them, or are they gonna start... Are you gonna start having to deal with 
things coming at you? Maybe. There's a lot going on. I'll tell you that right now. Just see if that I'm gonna, bird flies. I'm gonna go... Yeah, oh, yes, it. they are coming. Yeah. Uh, so, I've got two choices there. Either one is gonna be tricky. What'd you think of Montreal this time, Blake? What did I think of Montreal? Yeah. Oh, uh, it was really rainy. Yeah. It was. I went there once already, twice this year already now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When I was there in January for the Ubisoft event, it was really nice because it was snowy, but it, it was not as cold as it usually is. So it was pretty snow that you could still walk in. But this time it was just rainy, so I didn't get to see as much of the city. But it is a yeah, nice we, city. We I were mean. inside quite a bit this time, and I saw, I saw Avengers twice. I mean, in, in, the, in the in the city in the even, three days. Even in the rain, I mean, Montreal is a beautiful city, so yeah, it's hard it to complain. There's a lot of pretty buildings, and I only had bagels once, though, so I, I had bagels twice. I failed with that. I only had poutine once this time, though. The the bagels in Montreal are something to go to the city for. They know how to do it. The thing I was impressed by last time I went there was how the the bike lanes, when it snowed, somebody had plowed them, but oh, yeah? not plowed them all the way, yeah. so that you could cross-country ski in them. Oh, wow. And I saw people cross-country skiing That's in the smart. parks and things. Yeah. yeah, they know what to do in the cold. Yeah. It was not the best rain city, though. I saw lots of like gutters flooded and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Here it's the opposite. We when it snows, the whole city just shuts down because yeah. we don't know what to do with it. But rain, it's like, eh, whatever. We're used to it. Okay, this is this is tricky. Ah! <laughs> I see. Okay. What are you trying to do? Oh. There's a lot of mechanics in here. It's not just jumping and slashing. You can't, you can't just jump onto the platforms that are safe. Oh, I can't. I can jump and slash. I spoke too quick. <laughs> this is Luxana. It's good. The goddess of See the game's teaching you. She you know. isn't much reliable. You're learning what the mechanics. You doing? Hmm? This box of yours seems to have a special connection with Luxana. Oh, oh. Turning gears. Neat. Okay. This is a cool game. I'm impressed. This is uh, this is cool, and it feels like I fear the worst for our land. I, I have to have seen it in portable mode, and I, I would imagine the little tiny dude I'm playing as would be very small on the portable screen. But it feels like a good game to he, be able to walk around. He stands with. out of the background though, so it might yeah. be. Of the once quiet and sleepy These are cool too, these little Yeah. The little, entire uh, landscape graphic, was littered uh, with ominous crystals. It's a nice art style. Yeah. And where was this made again? In Quebec. This is uh, a game called Light Flow. I couldn't help but wonder. What, where are they based though? Montreal? I think Quebec City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I think. I just read uh, a quick little tiny bio about him. But... Maybe finding her would be the key to unlocking both his past. Oh, Emilio Lopez is asking which figures are those? What was happening to Marvel the, Legends? These are Marvel Legends that I got at the Disney store last year or two years ago. And what about the cap? This is uh, a Mezco 112 cap from uh, Comic Con. Currently, my favorite toy line right now is this the 112 line they're like mini hot toys and I've talked about them I've got a couple of Batmans and things I love them and this is the new Kratos from uh, NECA and uh, it's oh, people can't even see that because it's, it's off the oh it's okay it's I like love this giant it. Kratos it's the best this is the giant Kratos he's talking about this, the, it's my uh, it's my favorite toy currently because it's just and epic this. And that. This is a popcorn container that I got <laughs> when we all saw Spider-Man Homecoming last yeah. year at the theater. They have, you know, the theaters do the gimmicky popcorn things. So there's a, I bought popcorn, not because I wanted the popcorn, but because I wanted this. It, it's a it great cool. set element. Yeah. Okay, so what am I doing here? It look, I mean, it's like, it's kind of chintzy. Like, you, I don't know if you'd want it in your real everyday life, but on a set, it looks really good. What is this? Uh, I've got this yellow thing above me now. What does this do? That's uh, Navi. She yeah. tells you how to get. Hey, hey, listen, listen. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, we just got another super chat from Tiago Santos. And this one is in euros. Oh, man. I guess because Tiago's in Spain. That's amazing. So we got 10 Thank euros. You. So that's probably, what, 50 bucks Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we can retire now. That's it in Canada. That's amazing. Tiago, thank you very much. Doy Owen has a very pertinent question, Vic. What is it? Where do you keep all your toys? And if so, how is your how big is your basement? Uh, uh, basement is not big enough. House not big enough. I have many, many awesome things in, in boxes. Um, and I live. I, I, we have a nice house, my family. Where we we've got a really nice setup, but it is not engineered really for the collector in me. And uh, we we talk about moving, but we love it in Vancouver, and our daughter's very happy. And and uh, the thing about Vancouver houses is. They're very expensive, and we bought our house a long, long time ago, so, you know, it was less expensive. It was still very expensive then. Uh, so the idea of leaving the city so we could have more room, and a large part of it mostly so I'd have more room for all the crap I have, uh, is somewhat appealing, but also a little bit silly, because yeah. we have it pretty good here. But uh, I would love to have the room to put up more collectibles and more shelves and all that stuff. I would love to, you know, one day have the set even with more of that stuff, but in a cool way, not like, not like other sets aren't cool, but uh, to be a little bit different than than a lot of the stuff that you see online. Do right you now. mean like make it look kind of fancy and? Yeah, I don't, I, and I don't know how. I haven't designed it or anything. It'd be great to work with a set designer to come up with a way to yeah. show off some of this stuff. Don't go in the water. Water bad. Water bad. <laughs> Uh, this is a cool game. It's, it's very stylish. People There's are, something in there. People in the chat are saying how okay. when you put the popcorn in here, it's like you're eating Spider-Man's brain. I know. It's, that thought occurred to me while I was eating the popcorn last it's year. It's kind of uh, macabre in it a is, way, isn't yeah. it? Is that a, is that a word? There, first word, first it, time the, I've used that word. The in R sport. is silent. Macabre. So, ma macabre. Macabre. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Spider-Man so, doesn't have a brain, though. Oh, so. look at this. The boat moves if I hold the uh, the Y down. Oh, because you're making the propeller. Yeah, the but I, I don't want to go that. I want to go the other way. So how do we do that? You oh, I see. No. Can I, you not spin it the other way? This is cool. Ah. How do you spin it the other way? Very nice. Okay, so one one button goes this way, one button goes the other ah, way. Ah, that's this a clever that's cool. a clever way to teach you how to do that. Because did this you even know cool. you could do that before? No. So that's good that they're teaching you. Oh, sword, fish, get up. ah! <laughs> would they hit you though? Because look at the perspective. They're yeah, they would hit me. Because they're in front of the boat. No, I just they got hit by up. that thing. This is cool, man. That doesn't make sense though, because they're in front of the boat. Bishop Gaines. They're, they're jumping it in front of it. Yeah. But then they come back and hit you, but you're... Then they would hit the boat. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's a minor complaint. Yes. It's it's a video game. 2D video games, man. Speaking of which, we should be getting a code pretty soon for uh, Donkey Kong Tropical mm. Freeze, which... Which we ouch. can't stream because Nintendo. Well, I think we're going to stream it, but you, what we might do is we might stop and start. Yeah. You know what I'm Trying saying? Trying to throw off the so, Nintendo algorithms. Yeah, it's it's very strange that uh, Nintendo is is so uptight about the streamings and stuff like that. But yeah. it's their business. It's really tough to tell Nintendo how to do things. They just do things that they, they want to do things. Tiago Santos says he's from Portugal, not Spain. Oh, love that country. I've been to Lisbon and I had an incredible time. I, I ate at John Malkovich's restaurant in Lisbon. He has a restaurant in Lisbon? Yeah, he, he, he lives there. Cool. And it's an amazing city. I don't know if you live in uh, Lisbon, Tiago, but uh, anybody that's uh, ever headed to Europe, if you're looking for an incredible destination to go to, go to Lisbon and go explore the, the old part of the city. It's, insa it's sensational. So beautiful. Bringing all kinds of, flooding all kinds of awesome memories into my head right now. Ah! Oh, I what fell happened? off the water. Oh. I fell off the boat it's into like the water. I fell through the boat. I can still control the boat from over here. 
That reminds me of a mission in Far Cry 5 where I had to carry this guy yeah. and throw him in a boat. And every time I threw him in the boat, he would bounce out of the boat like it was a trampoline. <laughs> I was getting really pissed <laughs> oh, off. That's not good. And then the checkpoint, I'd have to carry him for like five minutes to get back. It was like some weird glitch, like the boat. His body was colliding with the boat in a weird way. This is a truly like a Mario caliber kind of puzzle right here. You could absolutely see this in a 2D Mario game, which is very commendable. I could see like the, 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 the red and blue paint job all over this. So uh, Tiago says he lives in Oporto. Mm -hmm. I'm probably saying that wrong because I'm Canadian. You can't speak uh, Port Port Portuguese. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I'm anglicizing it, but whatever. Whoa! Go! 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 Whoo! Okay, this is super cool. Burn it. I'm I'm curious um, how, how Tiago uh, discovered Electric Playground. If he used to watch our stuff online before, or if, the, the, oh, if, if EPN is a new thing that he uh, he found on YouTube. I think. Let me see if he mentioned it. Well, he'll mention it now. That's Tiago, super cool. tell us how you how you found this. Oh, and Happy Console Gamer just says, "Hey Blake, what did you think about The Force Awakens?" <laughs> I'm done caring about that movie. <laughs> Isn't that Johnny's question every episode? Yeah. I'm done explaining why that movie's not good. John, tell the chat what you thought about uh, The Last Jedi. <laughs> I, uh, I'd rather talk about new things that I hate. <laughs> I, I actually have, have this kind of weird obsession right now where I'm, I've been listening to people just rant, just like pure hate and vitriol about The Last Jedi. Just like people just going <laughs> off. And then they recut every interview that Mark Hamill has done. It's kind of addictive. Yeah. You know, I certainly don't have the venom and the hate that some people have for that movie. But Vic, all. that's the point. It's supposed to be um, divisive. Divisive. Yes. Because that's the point of a Star Wars movie. It's not to go and be entertained by lightsabers right. and stuff. Yes. It's to sit there and have half the people hate it. Yeah, I don't remember the the wars I used to get into about the original trilogy. It's because those were good movies and everyone liked them. Yeah. Yeah, different, different era of Star Wars. Hopefully, Solo is not divisive. It looks divisive. good, honestly. It does look fun. From what I've seen, it's like, oh, it's fine. Oh, what the? Ah. Happy Console Hi. Gamer wants you to stream Metal Gear Survive on the Switch. Pardon me? Metal Gear Survive on the Switch. <laughs> Happy Console Gamer wants it. <laughs> I think that game is... Uh, going to die quickly and be forgotten quickly. Oh, Tiago has told us how he found us. Uh, says, a couple of years ago, I was browsing YouTube for retro stuff and ran into EPN TV and was surprised you are still going. So it's great. That's awesome. So I guess he must have seen us on TV before that. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 live here? we did air in different parts of the world. Oh, yeah, that's so, right. We so, were on, yeah. Sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. <laughs> uh, but it's cool, man. I'm glad people found our stuff. And we were on the internet even. Oh, yeah. When we were on TV, we had it, you know. Dude, we were on the internet. Were on, on we the had TV. video on the internet in 1995. We had tiny little clips that were like postage stamp size, and they were huge files at the time that people would have to download on that 1448 .8, modems. And uh, like we we were at the first E3 in uh, in um, 1995. Oops. And we shot interviews with people, and we cut them up into little bite-sized pieces and stuck them on the internet. Have you seen the Star Wars black figures for Solo? Because Emilio Lopez says they're actually really nice. They I I saw the gonna, gonna cl classic packaging. Star Wars ones. I saw a Chewbacca, which looked amazing, and it's like the old Kenner style thing. I was so close to getting it, but I couldn't just get a Chewie without a without a classic Han, and they didn't have the Han, so uh, Chewie stayed on the shelf. But uh, I do like those. I do like those black figures. I have so many Star Wars figures in my collection, though. It, it's uh, it. I can't get them all. Johnny loves how many toys I have. Every time he comes over, he's like, you need another Batman. <laughs> Would it surprise you to learn that I still have all my Star Wars toys from when I was a kid? No. I think anybody that's like into games or into this world or 
you know, loves movies or whatever, that love is never going to go away. I even and kept I, all my Phantom Menace toys. Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, you were a kid when Phantom Menace came out. I was only, out. yeah, I was like 12 when it came out, so... I bought a few of those before the movie came out. I've done that a few times, and I think, um... I think when Force Awakens came out, I said, I'm not buying any Star Wars toys until I see this movie. And you still I, bought a bunch. Though. I bought a few, yes I yeah, did. You yeah, bought, you bought a few. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Relative few. I didn't go few crazy. Few by your standards. Yeah. Johnny's big on the, uh, the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures still. He's got a whole bunch of them. I think he's got like a crate of, uh, of Holdo figures. Dean Howard has a nice rant about Star Wars. Says the Star Wars Disney movies need better storytelling. The movies ah. look great, but lack story. This is where Marvel shines to a fault. This is why Game of Thrones trilogy excite. Oh, yeah. so yeah, the Game of Thrones guy's making a movie, yeah. That should be good. I, you know, I think Ryan Johnson had a point, though, about not holding it to this standard of it being like Shakespeare, you know? Like, that's what's kind of held Star Wars back a little bit, too, is like when you're too... Like, Rogue One, I think, was the perfect... I know you're not a fan, but it was a perfect, for me, like, let's go in a different direction, let's change the theme song, let's make it feel grittier, but it still felt like Star Wars. And that was a really big accomplishment. And uh, I'd like to see more like that. Not, not stuff that offends people that love the old stuff, or any part of Star Wars, but changes it up. Star Wars shouldn't be divisive. No. You know, you can make an... A, an it should a, be crowd-pleasing. You can make a grown-up, intelligent movie that's yep. still... Like Avengers Infinity War. That's a grown-up, smart, and sophisticated movie at its core. Yes. But it's not this divisive thing that's they're like... They're crowd-pleasing. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they're trying to make a David Lynch movie. It's I mean, they're, they're going into the same theme park that the Pixar movies are and the, and the Disney movies are, the Marvel stuff and the, and the Star Wars stuff. It needs to be that level of crowd-pleasing, you know? And... Oh, cool. Yeah, who wants to... Who watches The Last Jedi and says, I want to go on the ride for that movie? Yeah. I mean, there's cool stuff, like the crate sequence. There was really awesome design pieces in there. Yeah, but the... Visually aesthetic. I, like, I really questioned some of the, the choices with, like, the like who would ever want to have one of those Star Wars bombers as part of their vehicle collection, or anything. They were the most useless <laughs> Star Wars ships ever. Also in, in space. Yeah. Why do you need a bomber in space that drops oh, I, bombs? I, I like the idea of them. They just all blew up instantly. They were, like, made out of paper. I loved um, Kylo Ren's ship, though. I loved that ship. And I loved his flying abilities. He was an amazing pilot, and I liked that sequence in there quite a bit. Kylo Ren's just awesome. He's a great character. Oh my god, this is... Ah! Whoa, I just... Ah! Oh, ho! Ah, this is fun. You can't... You can't get too ahead of yourself. And I'd say, I feel like you... Uh, I don't know how to gauge how many of those boxes I can make. Um, Tiago Santos has, has told us how he watches the show. He says, Vic, this might surprise you, but we had G4 on cable here in Portugal. Ah! So I've been able to watch the original airings of the show at the time. That's incredible. Yeah, both EP and uh, Judgment Day were on on G4. We were. I didn't the, know there was a G4 in Portugal. Yeah, that's right. They put that's, their they put their crazy. channel all over the place. Um, but we were the longest running uh, external partner for the network, so we we gained lots and lots of viewers out there through that. Such a shame, such a total shame that there is no nothing like G4 out there. There really should be a sort of a mainstream broadcast thing. So all. Th Four lights are lit up red. Does that mean I don't have another box? Yes. You're asking me? Okay, that's what it is. People are saying, people are talking about Jupiter rising in the chat. I think you guys mean Jupiter ascending. Jupiter rising is like pop oh! band. Oh my goodness. That was cool. This is why okay. Given J Jupiter ascending was the movie. Time ago. Chat. You can't count Get your facts straight, chat. But yourself. I don't know what I gotta do here.
Oh, you gotta beat the game. So, like, a weird thing here. I feel like I, I should be praying or something. They, they look like gears. Do you have to turn oh, them somehow? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Unlock this crucible to learn more. Can Find it in Act 1. Welcome to Numbra. Can you turn them somehow? Are they gears? I think there was a Numbra game. Yeah, Numbra Black Plague or... Yeah. No, survival horror games, right? No, no, no. It's, uh... It was another character based experience as well. I can't remember what it was, but I'm wondering if they if um, Bishop Games made the number game. I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is part of a bigger universe or something. Okay, so if I put these things up here, I can turn it like this. But it doesn't really do anything. Joy Owen is saying how... Oh, is... these are the collectibles that you can unlock in Act the Giant's Mouth. Okay, cool. Find it out. Okay, I got you. So these, this is like the um, the collectibles area, but I'm not there yet. Okay. Doi Owen is calling me out for calling Jupiter a space rock in a this day a couple of days ago. Okay. I think I called it that because I was comparing Jupiter to Pluto, so I couldn't say... I couldn't call Jupiter a planet in that sentence because I can't call Pluto a planet, so I just called them space rocks. Jupiter has, is is not gas at its core. It's, you know, it's molten rock the same way Earth and other planets are. Whoa, this is tough. So take that, doy. Come on. I think I need to go down to here. <laughs> Uh, Wizard of Loneliness says, Man, what a game. Reminds me of the old days when I would stand nude at the arcades and barf on the virtual cabinet. <laughs> okay. That's comment of That's the day right point. there. That's a good point, yeah. I remember doing that too. Doesn't everyone do that? <laughs> oh my god. I'm digging this. This is a cool game. I kind of want to play it. I mean, it looks great. You know what those weird platform things remind me of in the water? Frack. They look like in, do you remember that game Heart of Darkness mm -hmm. on the PlayStation? There's yeah. like, there's weird things on the water like that, but if you step on them, they eat you. Dude, that was like the, uh, that was like at E395, that was like the game of the show. That was, yeah. that was something that just blew all of us away. We couldn't believe. I remember when it came out, I was like, visual. this is awesome. It didn't sell though. I remember it was. Wasn't it controversial? Because you play as a little kid. Yeah. And he gets killed in really brutal ways, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember confronting the. It was developed, published by Virgin, I believe. It's either Virgin or GT Interactive. Both companies not involved in making games anymore. And I remember confronting the president of, of Virgin at that first E3, asking him what games he played. And he said, oh, I don't really play games. I run the company. I'm too busy. And I went, how could you possibly run a video game in company in this industry and not play games? That, that seems so counterintuitive. Wouldn't you want to see what you, shit your competition is all about? And wouldn't you want to really? And he was just like, no, it's, you can sell things and not not have anything to do with them. And I, I just that's thought crazy. That was, I thought that was so cr so nuts. Yeah. And I thought in my head, it's like, <laughs> what what you know book executive or movie executive yeah. or music executive yeah. wouldn't be tuned in to everything that's happening in yeah. their industry. It's like, hey, president of Ford, what car do you drive? Oh, I don't drive. Yeah. Like, I don't like cars. <laughs> like, that's stupid. Yeah, I'm sucking at this. Okay, I think we're going to get past this this puzzle, and then I think that's going to be a, a, a good... Uh, a good show. What's the today. deal with the boxes? Do, do some of them disappear and some of them don't? Or do you have what, a limited amount of time? Like, what's I have on? four boxes. Yeah. And you can tell how many you have by the red lights that come up on the on the uh, thing. Oh, so you and then it resets when you touch a platform. Yes. Okay. So but, you only have you only have four boxes to get to where you need to go. You look don't at just this. Have, you can't just infinitely do them. Oh my god. So now I got to get down to that platform. Yeah. And then Oh fuck, that's hard. God. This is tricky. Favorite line in Avengers. What's that? What was yours? 
Uh, I can't. I don't want to spoil it. It's something near the end. Oh, okay. okay. So I got one more. What was jump. your favorite line? Um, when Okoyo says, "Why isn't she down here?" Where was that? In the oh, big, you can't. You can't say where that was. That was in the big battle. Who's a Koyo? <laughs> that movie is like three hours long. <laughs> I gotta watch it. I've only seen it once, so I gotta watch it again. I think. Yeah, and, we, and our our viewing was terrible. Like we, yeah, we were three and, three rows from the front. And I lost my glass. I, I got up to go to the bathroom <laughs> like in the last half hour, right before the big oh battle. Oh my god, this is challenging. I lost my 3D glasses. So I had to watch the last 20 minutes of the movie without 3D glasses. <laughs> so that's not a good not a good way to experience a movie. No. Wow. Oh, Koi is the Yeah, okay. I remember that line now. Yeah, I, I love that. It. Yeah. It was just so matter of fact and perfectly delivered. <laughs> yeah, she's the no bullshit general. Yeah. yeah. So good. Oh my god. Darwin S says, Vic and Blake, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Oh god, this is hard, man. I would love another another uh, checkpoint up there, but ain't gonna get it. I love that you all get to watch me suffer <laughs> through this. Uh, Blade Blur just got here, says, damn it, I came right at the end. Ah. Uh, well, you're supposed to come at the end. Oh, dude. <laughs> Family show. Dude. Language. He set me up. I had to do it. Alright. Oh, I'm totally... Come on back! Oh, it, it does come oh, it back. Comes back. Oh, okay. God. This does is good, back, man! Does it come back faster if you stand on it for a less amount of time? I don't know. This is very good. The, oh, I need, it, I, I need to go on that. And I need to reset my boxes. God. That's so scary right there. Th this is great. Uh, Attention Gaming Disorders asking if you're ever going to review old movies on Film Fury. We have a little bit. The, uh, the challenge is the amount of time that Johnny and I have to collaborate. Because although I've done a bunch of stuff alone and John has too, we, we uh, prefer, obviously, to do everything together. Oh, oh. Those yeah, guys I move can't talk in this. Yeah. Oh, I'm so close! You're, you I can do it, Vic. I believe in you. I'm so close. You got it. You got this. Very impressive game, though. It started off pretty generous and cutesy. Ooh, right at the. And now it is definitely tricky. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, I did it! Woo! Good god. That was a big sea monster in the background. That is cool. On this, uh... Oh man, this is total tropical... Freeze time now. <laughs> this is this is like uh, you got to the check the Donkey Kong games, man. Those things are really hard. You got to the checkpoint though. I did, yes. But now the ground is mixing behind me, and I'm <laughs> shit. Just like this is, you. shit got real in this game. It suddenly turned into Saving Private Ryan all of a sudden. Watch out! Oh. Attention, gaming disorder it has requested that you review the entire Rocky series. Oh my god, that'd be films. great. Also, review all the uh, James Bond movies, Vic. 
Okay. We're, they're just watching real quick. There's only what 30 of them. Yep. Done. I've actually uh, they, Apple's been starting to re-release a lot of classic films in 4K. Been very impressed on, with the Apple TV on iTunes. Yeah. And uh, the 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 4K Apple TV. It's actually been super cool. Um, shit. I can't talk and do this at the same time. Uh, but uh, they, the Bond movies are in 4K, and I kind of want to watch Casino Royale again in 4K. Oh, Jerry, Jeremy Kornacki is asking, how ah. do you feel about the Harrison Ford movie Mosquito Coast? I, I didn't hear that. What would you say? Uh, it says, as a Harrison Ford fan, how do you feel about the movie Mosquito Coast? Oh, that, terrific. That's with River Phoenix, right? Yeah, that's a Peter Weller movie. Classic. Damn it. Yeah, he goes cuckoo. And, uh... But there was, you know, especially in this kind of uh, insane world that we're in right now with climate change and all that, it's, I don't know, there's something kind of timeless about his get away from, uh... Don't, 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 don't. Oh. <laughs> you can see the... Uh, I know, man. The, the, before it comes up, you can see it, I, like... I know, but there's, like, there's the momentum of the character still walking. Oh, you have momentum. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not, like... Plus, you know, I'm pressing, I'm pressing right to run. Okay. I loved, I loved uh, Mosquito Coast, The Fugitive. Oh, I'm done. Done. So close. Ugh. It's very good, man. You're wasting your boxes, Vic. Huh? You're wasting your boxes. I'm wasting the boxes. Regarding Henry with... And uh, regarding the Henry, yeah. J.J. Yeah. Abrams wrote that. And the uh, Jack Ryan movies are pretty good. Yeah. Air Force One is good, too. Yep. Yeah. Um... Blade Blur is asking if you have any Marvel movies in 4K. I do. I have Spider-Man and uh, uh, Thor and Black Panther will be in 4K when I get that. Have they re-released the older ones? In, uh... No, not yet. Disney just joined the 4K revolution. I don't know where I am at all. And I don't have anything. Oh! oh so close! Cool that it lets you go up as high as you want, and but then you get screwed. Okay. I'm gonna do this. You got it. Yes. Boom. And I think that is the end of the level. Good job. Oh, there's the owl guy. There's the owl. Something cool. This something is epic is going to happen right here. Boss battle. This is a this good is game, a guys. It's called Lightfall for the Nintendo Switch. Game. It's on the PC. I believe it's on the other platforms, too. Oh, The Witness. The Om oh, the Witness, yeah. Support. That was a good movie, too. That was also a Peter Weller movie. Classic. Okay, hey, run. What's going run. On? Oh, there's like three three <laughs> This is great. What now? Woo! That is so cool. Whoa! Oh my God. Hurry, Look at that. Look at that seahorse. That is so cool. The entire layer. It's like a seahorse with rabbit ears. Oh, and he's tied up. Okay, that's, that's it. Enough. That's it. That's good. Now you have to do the, like, like what you just did, but there's a. a that's time good. Limit, I'll know. I'll play the rest on my own. I can't <laughs> I can't suffer and, and play that all with everybody. That's gonna take some time. Uh, but thank you everybody. Oh, P Peter Weir. Oh, Peter, Peter, Peter Weir. Peter Weller, Peter, Peter Weller is the actor. That's right. Peter Weir. Thank you, KL Sid. 
Uh, very cool game, though. Uh, Lightfall, it's called. Uh, keep knocking over cap. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Blake, for running the chat. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you very much okay, for your bye, support. Everyone. And, uh, we, you know, obviously we love having you here live, but we also really appreciate everybody that takes the time to check out the archive of our content as well. Uh, you're all super generous and awesome, and we really appreciate you, and we will be back very soon with a new EP Live. Uh, but thanks for watching, and uh, remember, we've got tons of other content for you to check out, so please do, and if you dig it, hit subscribe. you got to hit that little bell because YouTube doesn't do a good job at letting people know that we've got new content out there. Way to go, YouTube. Uh, and uh, if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.